Welcome in guys to another episode of the Young Entrepreneurs Network podcast. Today's guest, we've only ever had one other individual that's done something similar to him. We've had property, we've had coaches, we've had lead gen, we've had agencies of every other sort. And we've also had Daniel Lubion who runs a, an active work company. And we've got Robbie on today who also runs um, an active work company, but more in the sense of an actual uh, clothing wow. brand itself. Whereas yeah. obviously Daniel does more um, reselling and that mm-hmm. side of things, mate. So firstly, thank you so much for coming on, Not mate. Tell me, it's my pleasure. Been looking forward to it for a while. So yeah, buzzing yeah. to get into, it, mate. Buzzing yeah, to get into. It. Um, so we'll start obviously kind of initial origin story because we had a call before this because um, be- part of this episode, guys, me and Robbie didn't even know each other. Nah, nah, literally, nah, just nah, literally rolled with it straight in my pod. Um, but we had a quick call beforehand, and I wanted Robbie to just kind of run me through his origin story, and it's it's fucking awesome, man. I think a lot of people will be, a lot of you guys will relate very heavily to what. Robbie's been through and the kind of experiences he's been through. So, yeah, mate, how, how did it start? Yeah, so it all sort of started, the initial journey was 2021 mm. uh, during lockdown. Like May time, um, I was in a job, electrician, apprentice electrician, but I knew that that just wasn't going to be the long-term thing. So started, a, as you said, an active wear reselling company. Mm. Where I sold Nike, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, that sort of thing. But I didn't like the way that you couldn't like, like there's only so much you can do with other people's brands. So like I can't market it the way I want it to like, get like athletes on board, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just done that for a bit, done that for about six months until about the end of 2021. Yeah. And I had this vision, I need to start a clothing brand, I need to do it. But literally had not a Scooby, not yeah. a clue how to do it, so. Literally, I just thought it was going to be like a breeze. Mm. Literally, you go in, you say to a uh, manufacturer, this is what I want, and they bring it back, but yeah. nah. Um, so yeah, first of all, got the logo designed. Um, I thought, so we were actually called Active Line previously, and we just kept that name, but we were going to use this awful logo. <laughs> I was just like, because I wanted to do everything just like quick. Yep. I had this vision, I was like, I need to just get it done mm. before someone else does it. But then I was like, nah, right, take your time, sit back, get your first logo done, and then take it for there. So I got the first logo done. And then, yeah, um, started off with sort of blanks, like yep. just like a normal, like bright colored t shirt, print the logo on, yep. sell it out. But I was, we were doing like three of three of each color, like, yep. like small, small quantities, and just like the quality was off, the fit was off, everything about it was just bad. Yeah. But, it got like the initial, like my pals were just buying it. So it mm. got the initial brand sort of started. Yeah. And then I thought like, right, I need to do something where I'm actually designing. Cause that's mm. what I want to do. Like design my own clothes, like do this color, do that color. That's that's essentially what you want to do. Yep. Cause I was sick of like, when I'd done the reselling, it was mainly like Nike was charging like 150 quid for like a windbreaker jacket. Yeah. And for young folk, that's just, it's just not doable. Like that's mm. like some folks like, weekly wage, like half weekly wage, and the quality is not that good. Yep. Like in the, in the grand scheme of things for the price you're paying. So yeah, I wanted to make sure the quality was bang on for an affordable price. Yep. So um, trolling the internet, trolling the internet, found us manufacturer and I was like, okay, I'll try him. Got a sample came. Looking back at it now, it's horrific, <laughs> awful. But at the time I was just so naive. I was like, okay, that's okay. Yep. But uh, nah. What was wrong with it? It was just, I mean, this wasn't awful, but like the more like I washed it, the logos would come off and then like a wee hole started pe- appearing mm. and I was like, mm, this isn't right. Yep. But I didn't know I didn't know what to do. Like obviously now, like all the stitches are done a s- certain way. Yep. Back then I just thought there's a st- there's one stitch. In, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got that ordered and I just said to the guy like, this is the design I want. Can you order me a sample? He was like, what material do you want? I was like, just like a waterproofy, <laughs> no, no clue like what yeah. polyester nylon. Um, and then the sample came, and I was like, right, okay, let's just order a bulk now and yep. see what comes. So I ordered the bulk over. I think it was Christmas, twenty twenty two, and it was like an eight week sort of lead time. Yep. Um, I remember coming back from my work work one day, so excited. I'd seen it arrived. I was like, right, here we go. Finally, time to get kick started. And I just remember opening the box, and oh my god, you wouldn't actually believe the quality of this. It was 
the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Drawstrings back to front, holes in pockets, logos squint, um, different like sizing, like, oh, it was, cause I hadn't even done like sizing. I just said, I want a small, medium, large, and extra <laughs> yeah. large, which like yeah. every brand's different for their sizing. Mm. And I just remember like breaking down. I was like, what have I done? Like, mm. cause, I, cause by that point, I had managed to save up a bit from doing the reselling before. Yeah. And then obviously selling the blanks to start with, I'd managed to get like a wee pot of a couple of thousand. Yeah. And I was like, right, we'll build this collection, go to the next collection, so on and so on. And yeah, it was just, it was a case of actually binning the, binning the, the whole 2,000 pounds. Just, and I just remember breaking down and mum was like, came in, she's like, what's wrong? And I was just like, that's it, that's it done. Like, and I had hardly even started, yeah. but I had this vision of where it was gonna go. Mm. And then when that happened, it was like, oh, where do I go from here? Did just, you ever try and get a refund or anything like that? I did. And then yeah. a week later, the company was gone. Company was yeah, gone? Yeah, Ori blocked me on, on the hell. app that I was using. So Fuck and that me, was it. That, he, he, that was was like, he was like, oh, I'll sort it out. I'll send you more. I was like, I don't want more sent. <laughs> I've seen the quality. Like, I just want my refund. But nah, never came. So Fuck it was me. like sort of back to square one. Which is fucked, mate. Because a lot of people, is, I think that's the difference. I don't think like service based and like actual like, product yeah, based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have capital that you need to commit, and I think that's the part I've always been fearful of as well. Where it's like, obviously, we done like hoodies for young and lazy. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like um, part of our journey. And luckily enough, like our the guy that I was doing it with, James, um, he'd already went through like ten different manufacturers, had multiple different hoodies yeah, set. Yeah. It was mainly like his job to like just do mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we we had one that was based in the UK that he trusted. The quality was like class, but I never had to learn any of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it was because like in hindsight like, it just wasn't my passion. It wasn't That's something it, I actually yeah, wanted yeah. to do. Whereas like see when you started to realise there was so much more into it, like so much more to it, did that get you more excited? Did that get you Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that happened I was like, right, where did I go from here? I've clearly done something wrong. Yeah. So it was sort of back to square one, finding a supplier to start with. Because I still had in my mind, I don't want to do these blanks. Like the blanks yeah. weren't my scene. I want to like, so I designed my own first jacket, mm. which once again, looking back, probably wasn't the best, but it was, I found a supplier which was good enough yeah. that the quality was good. Mm. And it actually turned out to be my best seller. It was just a simple jacket. It was a grey jacket and I had like a bright coloured top. Yeah. And... Um, so that was still just me doing it myself. I still didn't really know like stitching and stuff. So yep. like the stitches were on the in, out, on the outside. Mm. So you could see the stitches. Um, but yeah, that they were okay. So I'm always curious about like why the manufacturers don't like help you out. Help you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're I thinking like stitches on the outside and then normally they're on the inside, yeah. surely they would come back and be like... I think because sometimes they do do the stitches on the outside. Like I just gave them a drawing that I'd done on a bit of paper and said, I want this jacket, here's the sizing. Cause I knew that I yep. needed to do sizing this time. So I went and got like, I think it was a night jacket and mm. tape measure <laughs> and <laughs> sized off. And I was like, cause I quite like the fit of Nike yeah. and stuff. Um, but yeah, and then it was, that was like, must've been like three or four months later. Yeah. So it was just work, save up, work, save up. Um, eventually managed to save up a little bit just hours upon hours of trying to find a supplier as well that was just getting samples in that's rubbish another sample in that's rubbish finally got one in and i was like right i how, can deal with it how did you go about like finding the suppliers just internet literally internet. just internet i went went down to newcastle to try and speak to had a meeting with one but it's just the uk was just one two dear too big a high, uh, minimum order. Right. It's like they were saying like, we can only do like 500. Mm. I was like 500 of one item for me. Yeah. I've not even got like 500 followers on Instagram. Yeah. Like, um, so it was just beneficial to go overseas. And what's it like, when you say the price was too dear, like, what, like what's a rough comparison? Oh, I think comparison? it was, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was something like the price point that I want to yeah. sell my t-shirt for. I think that's what the manufacturing cost right. was. So it was like £25 to manufacture wow. a t-shirt. I was like, well, my whole vision is making affordable clothing yeah. brand. Like, I'd then have to sell a sportswear t-shirt for like 40, 50 quid. Yeah. Like no one's going to buy that. Um, and the lead times were just like, I think it was like 12 weeks or something like that, just to manufacture the t-shirt. Yeah. Never mind the samples. And it was like going to be like six months. Mm -hmm. I was just like, nah, 
I can't. Um, so managed to settle on a supplier in Hong Kong. Yep. So yeah, they've been they've been fantastic. Been with them ever since. But still, we were like, one, our designs aren't that intricate, yep. and two, we're still doing something wrong here, like the stitching and stuff. So it was, again, back to the drawing board. Let's find us designer. Mm. Again, days and days, 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 and we've landed on our boy now, and phew, hats off to him, he's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, he works for Liverpool Football Club, yep. he's done Gymshark, JD Sports, so wow. yeah, he's, 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 he's good, he's the, yeah. he's the money man. Like. How did you, um, like, I'd, I'd always imagine, like, for me, almost like find, maybe find like an advisor that's like mm -hmm. further ahead, that's been in the game for time. It's like I always think, lad, they have to go with some mad value proposition yeah, yeah, yeah. to him. What was the value proposition to to this guy, the designer? Literally, just I just explained what we had so far and what I was looking for, and said these are a few inspirations. Mm. And he just loved he loved the idea. He loved he loved the brand, and he just he was just so welcoming from the start. It was like, yeah. yeah, these are my prices. Like straight away. I was aware I'm going to be paying a premium for him. Like I'm happy just because yep. like people don't realize that you need tech packs and all sorts. And, yeah. And like, it's just at the start, I wasn't doing any of that. And what is a tech pack for anyone that doesn't know? Tech packs, basically a technical pack that you can then send to the factory that tells you the like distance between stitching, the size of your logo, like the care labels, um, like yeah just everything like the pantone colors just everything that a factory needs to look at and say that's us and you don't need yeah. to like they don't need to keep it's basically to stop like the questions like how do you want yeah. this stitch what's the distance between this and it just gives just gives them like a clear and i think like the bigger like the better the manufacturers the higher their expectations will be yeah, in yeah, regards exactly. to like yeah. getting so like that first one like he just he would have taken anything and just tried yeah. to make it yeah whereas like obviously the one we've got now like you still do get asked some questions even mm. though you've got a fully functioning tech pack just because they want to be bang on the money. Because I think i um, got a friend even just recently he's went from service based into want to create his own yeah, brand yeah. Um, and he was telling me about like when he was explaining to me like going to um, I think he went to like maybe like a design agency or like uh -huh. a, someone yeah, yeah. like a, a pack of designers um, and they were like yeah man a, a tech pack is going to be like 750 quid just yeah. to get it dusted and I'm yeah. like bro that's without even like that, that, and then you need to order the sample of that which is because it's a one off yeah. they don't know you're going to order bulk so they still need to get all the colour of fabric mm. in for that so they charge you like 100 quid sample for a t-shirt Yeah. so it's like before you've even started there's like your tech pack plus the sample plus all the shipping because it's coming from overseas it's not cheap yeah and then the wait time as well the wait time, yeah, yeah yeah so and then obviously if that sample comes back you don't like it or you mm -hmm. don't like the color you don't like the fit yeah it's another sample so it is yeah it does it does add up like yeah. but i gotta be too impatient mate i know <laughs> i know <laughs> I a lot of folk just think like obviously like i did at the start it's yeah. like you just draw up a t-shirt this is what i want mm -hmm. um but nah there's there's a lot more to it you said um like comparing them comparing like hong kong um like supplier to to the initial one you said that like they came and they were fantastic yeah yeah what was it that made them fantastic compared to the other one besides um, the like i just being like just like constant reassurance just asking questions like is this how you want it can mm -hmm. you double check that these are the sizing um i've so i've done like a new t-shirt which has got the coordinates on it. And even like the small details of like, are you sure these are the coordinates? Like, mm. this is where it's showing up. Like, is that correct? Just like totally just different. Yeah. Whereas this guy was just wanting my money. Mm. He was just happy to take the couple thousand, produce rubbish. And then, I mean, they're still, they are still sitting like in my house, yeah, just in a big bundle. I just look at them every time. I'm going to keep one just so I can look you back. You should have brought and, like, one with us, mate. Just, know, <laughs> just so I can look back in five years and be like, Jesus, come, come yeah. a long way. But yeah, just the constant reassurance, like the, the communication, like yeah. constantly back and forth. It's just, you feel at ease. You feel, yeah. you know, they know what they're doing. Whereas this guy was sort of just like, okay, here's your money. Yeah. And like, looking back now, like even like the way he took the payment, like he took all of it up front. Mm. Whereas like, the ones I've got now will take half and then yeah. half once you're all happy with it and stuff. Yep. It's just, it just makes so much more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just all a learning curve, but yeah. it's just to try and make people 
not do the same mistake that I done. That's the thing is it's crazy, bro. Because like communication is something that like to us would be like a minimum standard. Yeah, a lot yeah. people listen to us just now, but like, well, of course I would communicate with my clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like see when it's not done like properly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we even spoke about it. Like say like mechanics with like cars. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you drop off your car and then you have to like phone them. Maybe like the end of the day, yeah, but like. Yeah what's happening Hi, with my car yeah, and they would be yeah. like oh nah like, we'll, we'll contact you tomorrow and it's yeah, like yeah. no comms there and you're they've got your car something that's yeah. super valuable yeah, 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 yeah. or the vice versa it's like you've paid him your money something super valuable to you and you're just not getting any of the yeah, reassurance no, that you're no, looking no. for in it it's fucked yeah it's um, mad it's mad that's since it happened it's one thing we want to try and do is just yeah. constantly communicate with our customers if anything does go wrong yeah. or if they want to return something it's just like constantly reassure them yep that's fine free return yep. yeah yeah so yeah it's just it's just a key component you suppose yep. of business that's in my eyes anyway so we carried on then so you got that first shipping in it was fucking class like from the, the Hong Kong yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened after then so that arrived oh it must have been about so this was like when the business sort of I'd, in my eyes started yep. this is when it I say it started so it was it arrived in May 2023 yep. Or June, sorry, start of June 2023. I arrived and I was going down to London to do a pop up shop yep. for that weekend and it arrived one day before, which well, is lucky. You must have been shit. Yeah, yourself. Well, literally, well, literally was. <laughs> I remember, because I, I actually was meant to do one in Edinburgh the weekend before, but I had to cancel that because yep. it didn't arrive. But How much do pop up shops cost, by Well, the one in London was not cheap. Yeah. Yeah, it's, looking back, it was a mistake. Like, right. London's not the sort of demographic for this brand yeah at the moment anyway especially mm. and on that day it was in like a square in um i think it was camden it yep. was a square that one day that i went the square was shut for like road work so no one could get through Fuck. so there was just no footfall whatsoever it was mad it was like literally like sitting in an empty shop how did you feel that though? that was hard yeah but my brother lives in London, mm. so he came down with a few of his pals. And we sort of made it like a, put some tunes on, had a couple, had a couple of beers, like just outside, like welcoming yeah. people in. I mean, the experience was good. It told me what, like I know now, not probably to go back to London at the minute. Yeah. It's just not worth it. And it also showed me like how, how to sort of run an event like that, mm. get everything set up. So, cause I was going on an event in Liverpool the weekend after. Yep. So it was good experience to be like, well, now I know how to run it, how to speak yep. to folk and stuff. But yeah, so that came and then Liverpool the weekend after Liverpool was very good. Mm. Yeah, that was that was sort of like a like it rebuilt my sort of trust in I do have something here because it was like you go down and folk are actually interested, folk love the product, whereas London, you're like, no one's coming in, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then it sort of sort of kicked off from there, but I had booked to go away to Asia before I even thought of all this. Mm. And Asia came on like the 16th of June. So all my stock had arrived and then I flew off to Asia. Fuck. So it's just like, Oh, no, it just started like picking up, picking up, picking up, and June mm-hmm. was like pretty mad. Yep. And hats off to my mum. <laughs> she done it. Yeah, Die, your yeah. mum came in, man. What a champ. Because I'd booked it all. Mm. I'd booked my flights and like. How long were you away for? I was away for eight weeks. Eight weeks. Oh. So over June and August yep. and July, which are obviously the busiest months for something like this, because yep. folk love the shorts and t-shirts. Yeah. So it was, it was a combination of mum, wee brother, wee sister, wee cousin. And then obviously my mum went on holiday. So I had my pals coming into my house to run it. But nah, it, it was all part of the experience and it, it it worked. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, especially with the time difference in Thailand, like mm-hmm. phoning my mum at like 12 o'clock when she's just finishing her work yeah. to say, this is what I've got in for today. But yeah, hats off to them because they did keep the business flowing. So Sounds like a proper, like, when we talk like origin story, yeah. like, it's got all the ingredients. It does, yeah, yeah. It's got all the ingredients. What I'm, um, what I'm curious about, mate, is like, why didn't you quit? Um, Just, for me, it's not, it's, it's like, once I had started, I thought, I've got a vision here, I know yeah. what, like, it's not just about the money. 
Like, I love designing clothes. Like, yeah. it's good fun. Yeah. Like, um, I love seeing people, like, see people coming up to me and saying, oh, your T-shirt's excellent in the gym. Even just getting folk to go to the gym that maybe wouldn't before because yep. they've bought something of my clothes mm. and they've wanted to wear it. Because, yep. like, as you know, when you buy something like that, the first thing you want to do is go and, yep. go and use it. So, uh, yeah, just and just walking down the street, seeing folk, like, it's, it is mad. Yep. Um, but, yeah, just I had that sort of vision of, I want, like, even if it's small, just designing clothes, like, it's good fun. Mm. Um, and I've got a sort of don't give up mentality, like, like yeah. if you've got something in your head, then there's no point just giving up at the first hurdle. Like, yeah. there's going to be hurdles along the way. Like, that's the first of many. Yeah. It has been. And I've overcome them all. So it's just keep, just about to keep going. Because I think you need that kind of... I'm reading a book just now that I'd recommend anyone to read. It's called uh -huh. The Values Factor. Oh, yeah. um, and it speaks a lot about like your internal values um, like as a whole and how it can play a role within something mm -hmm. like a business, for example. Um, and there's so much in that book that speaks about like the importance of having both support, which is primarily positive things, and challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how like there is no um, like positive without a negative. There is no negative without a positive. Yeah, and seeing it, like, yeah, yeah. both sides of it. And that's the main thing I'm taking from you. It's like you don't see it as... I was watching that, I was listening to an awesome podcast that was sent to me by a client and one of the things it spoke about was like, do you see something as discipline or do you see something as I'm doing it because I love it? And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. getting the impression you're doing it because you love it. Yeah, you've got, I mean, like you sort of got to, don't you? Like yeah. if, you, if you don't love it, you're not going to put in the same sort of like, yeah. like work. Like if you don't love something, you're yeah. just going to slog away, like just yeah. doing it because you have to do it. Yeah. So, so what happened after I came back from Asia? What was the script? Um, so I was a wee bit behind. Mm. I'd like sort of taken the holiday and sort of like let it slip a wee bit just because I wasn't focused fully on it. I was, but I was still doing stuff when I was away. So when I was away, I managed to like secure a good few contracts with boxers and stuff, phoning, designing. Um, but I should have been about two months. Should have been doing all that yeah. before I went. But yeah, it was sales kept picking up kept picking up throughout summer um and then winter came i'd had this new collection coming but i didn't get it out in time for for christmas which was a bit of an annoying one but i still had all the other stuff flying yeah so um it was still month per month just picking up picking up picking up what did that feel like when it was like picking up Ah, it was yeah, it was mad. So like getting approached by like retailers and stuff, saying, "Can we st stock your product?" It was just like a sort of yeah pinch me moment, like mm. and just like walking down the street, seeing folk wearing it, um, and then obviously, like I said about the boxers, we sponsored a few boxers. So I went down to London, um, with my brother and my wee brother and my wee cousin, yep. and just like seeing it on like BT Sport because the boxers were wearing it, mm. and just like I got, my phone just started pinging. I was like, what, what's going on? And everyone's like, oh, look on the TV. It's your rant. It's your rant. Because all yeah. the training team were wearing it and stuff. Yeah. Wow. So it was pretty mad. And then um, we got the new collection out for the 4th of January this year. Mm. And ever since then, it's just sort of just went mad. Just mad. like blown up. Yeah. Class. So what's the, sorry, bro. I was just going to ask, what's the like record amount of sales? Like when we last spoke, it was like 150 within a month. Yeah, yeah. It? So it's, still about that's just this year like yep. we're talking like 150 and um, that's just through the site and then you've got like the other retailers more retailers coming on board sort of wow. nowadays like obviously we spoke about daniel Levy. yeah and um, shout out to him he's helped me big time so he's come on board now yeah yeah and then sort of every day i'm just getting a message like oh we love your products do you want to stock do you want us to stock it but i've got a sort of like vision of i only want folk to stock it that I like the look of their page yeah um i know tomorrow i could go out to like every reselling and say do you want to stock my product and we get the brand out there yeah but i don't know i'm just funny about like who who stocks it so i've make not make it a premium product it's not a premium product like in terms of pricing yeah but sort of have that sort of exclusivity so it's yep. not just like every page is selling it but it's also like the if like certain company like if you want certain individuals and certain companies to like yeah. stock it it's like you'll have a vision of what the standard is in terms of like what that even looks like exactly. so it's yeah, on yeah, the yeah, website yeah. that so, sort of stuff so because i know like 
you might get other pages selling it, but I don't know what their service is like. And then yeah. it does affect your brand sort of, cause it's like, well, he got a bad service with that page that's then selling your brand. He's going to look at the brand as well funny, so... It yeah. definitely matters, man. Like, anyone that says it doesn't, like, there's there's so many, like, um, <coughs> factors that play in there that's, like, it almost, like, out with your control if you don't vet yeah. them intensively. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, you know Daniel's fucking... Like, yeah. we, we had a huge conversation last week in the, the, um, the high earners group, but Daniel was like, bro, no matter what, no matter whether someone pays for normal delivery, I always send it next day. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like... <laughs> I was like... Bro, if they've not even asked for it though. Yeah, it's like, no, like you no. don't, you don't even, you don't even need to do that. And he's like, yeah, but I just got into such a habit of yeah. like just such a high tier level of service. And he was like, see if I went with just whatever one they paid for. Mm -hmm. He was like, I would have literally saved like fifteen grand this year. And I'm like, mate, you're <laughs> really? a joke, bro. Jeez. Like you're an absolute joke. Um, That's what makes folk come back the way. No, like, they order something at twelve o'clock that day and receive it the next day. Like, yeah. it, it's just worth it, isn't it? It's just it's mad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of like, I guess one of the things that we didn't touch on in regards to just like the beginning of the journey, obviously you went through, um, you're working as an electrician. Yeah. When we spoke, it was like, that ended. Yeah, so. Kind of abruptly, I know. Obviously like I've touched, came, went to Thailand. Yeah. Came back to just no job. Wow. So, um, I mean, it was so, sort of mixed up with dates and stuff, but the way it was sort of handled was, I didn't show up on the day because I wasn't, I hadn't been told, hadn't been told to come here or come where. Within two hours, I had a P45. Wow. And that was five years of like not missing a day. So I don't know if it was pre planned when I went away. Maybe he thought he didn't like the way that my business was going. Mm. And he thought well, he's going to sack it anyway for his business. Yeah. But yeah, that was also tough because I came yeah. back from obviously spending quite a lot on a holiday yeah. and traveling to just being like, oh, what? Well, What's, what next yeah and because i'd done it for so long as well like i always had a vision of starting my own business and it was either it was going to be something to do with sportswear or sports because yeah. i love football or it was going to be my own electrician business yeah. and when that got taken away i was like well now it's just tunnel vision mm -hmm. for active line so and what was the difference between like going from like almost like that turning point in your life right having like the being an electrician behind you to like having no job, still have yeah. wanting to run this brand. Like, what was the the kind of thought process? Like, what were you feeling like in the moment? Uh, just sort of, I think it's kick started. Like when it's, yeah. when you've got no option, like it's like what do you do? Yeah. Like I've I have to make this work. Mm. So yeah, it was just like, I mean, it like obviously it meant I had full days to do content, full days to send stuff out. But in that moment, it was like, geez, like. I am, I am in a in a hole here, yeah. but I managed to get myself another wee job until the end of this year, yeah. or end of last year, sorry, and then this year it's just going full time and active line. So amazing, man! Yeah, it's fucking outstanding. In in terms of going full time now, what does your day to day kind of look like? Um, so I'm strict on getting like half an hour, an hour of exercise every day. Yeah, um, big footballer. I uh, love playing football, so training once a week, game every Sunday, but in between then it's either gym, walk the dogs, run, and I'll usually try and do that first thing before I start, yeah. just so I can get day started mm. and then into it. But yeah, I've got a, got a unit um, where we hold all our stock, so sort of just there, pack the orders first thing, post office. Um, and then yeah, just back, either content, like yesterday we were in the photo shoot, in the studio yeah just i mean i do everything myself i do the marketing the instagram mm. um packing the orders d designing the clothes dealing with all the retailers so yeah it's long long days but yeah. i wouldn't change it for the world so yeah, yeah. Would, anyone out there that wants to like start a clothing brand what would be your advice to them now that you've kind of went through um, the initial trenches just go for it definitely go for it but be realistic because it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Like it is, like we say, it is a long, yeah. risky process. Um, a lot of chances that it could go mm -hmm. wrong or you could lose a lot of money. But I mean, there's other ways to do it. Like there's, I know there's loads of blank companies out there. If you want to print on demand, yeah. that's, that's a lot less risky, but 
Yeah, it's good fun. Like, yeah. who, who doesn't want to design clothes for the living? Yeah, because I, I guess that's what, like, with the hoodies, that's where we started. We just started print on demand. Actually, that's and it. it. Just, the yeah. margins were obviously shorter, but yeah. we, it was like the hoodies we were selling them for, it was like 47 quid or 50 odd quid mm-hmm. or something like that. And it was print on demand, it was like 25. Yeah. There I mean, or there about. Yeah. Sometimes you need to, like, like, there's retailers that I'm dealing with that I'm making, like, next to no profit, but it's about, like, how many f- sales are they making? It's then in turn putting like your clothes on another e- extra thousand people. Yeah. Another thousand people, their pals, their pals, but, and it just, yeah. it's all worth it in the end. Yeah. So, yeah, and nah, I'd nah, just go for it. I'd, I'd say go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the, the boxers, I'm curious about that spark because I feel like where a lot of companies struggle. So, like when we've done the hoodies, for example, mm-hmm. I know you're a big hearts. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fan, I'd built such a good relationship with like Liam Boyce, yeah, yeah, Gino, um, and like because we we had the hoodies, they were happy to share them, yep. get them out there, wear them, uh-huh. be an ambassador for it. Um, in regards to Young and Lazy as a whole, and I remember like getting so many messages and being like, "How, <laughs> yeah, how the yeah, fuck yeah. is that going to happen?" And for me, like, I never actually had anything tangible because I was like, "I played COD, they love COD." Yeah, yeah. Like, Literally, that's it. Yeah. It's just like I've. Like, I get, like, messaged off, like, these influencers, Love Islanders, like, yep. Scotty G Shore, for example, like, three and a half million followers asking yep. if he can promote my brand, but it's not worth it for me. Yep. Like, a guy like him, predominantly his followers are probably either girls that think he's good looking or people that are interested in, like, Geordie Shore. Whereas if I get, like, a boxer who's got 7,000 followers, I know for a fact that those 7,000 followers are following him because they're interested in boxing. Yep. And if they're interested in boxing, they're most likely going to be interested in these clothes. Yeah. But yeah, it was just a case of like messaging hundreds and hundreds of people and getting like a few responses back. Mm. Um, I managed somehow to snipe one in America and I've done it like, he's fighting for the world title in two weeks. Wow. And he just, he just loves the brand. Yeah. Like that's it. Like he's training that often. So if he's getting free clothes, it's just a win-win for him. Yeah. Is that what the value proposition was? Like, yeah, yeah. Clothes, I would yeah. send you free clothes. I was like, I don't want any, like I don't not asking you to post this per month or this per month. If I get like one post out of it, happy days. Like yeah. it looks good on my Instagram. Looks good on the website. And yeah, it's just. And then they started wearing it, and they're like, "I love your brand. Can you keep sending me stuff out?" And they just kept posting it more and more and more. And it's just, yeah, it's just sort of snowballed from there. And now I'm getting to the point where it's boxers are asking me or boxers are just buying my clothes and printing it, the logo on themselves. Amazing. So they've obviously seen like these boxers and been like, well, it it must be good. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty mad. Uh, It's pretty fucking nuts. And I guess like the relationship building aspect, like I asked Daniel the same question, like how do you build relationships with really good suppliers or like whatever it may be? Because it's a key component of it. Um, and his main answer was that authenticity, yeah. being yourself. Literally. I think they like the fact that it comes from myself. Yeah. They're like, well, it's not just coming from like a bot or like a automated, like I'll send like quite a personal message, like actually research them, see who they fought last, yeah. rather than just like sending out 300 messages. Hi, do you want to wear our clothes sort yeah. of thing? So. Same way you did with the podcast, right? It's like personalized yeah. message, like super genuine. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's yeah, it, so. Which is fucking class. Um, so what's the plan from here on out, out, like with the business? What's just, the vision? I mean, I'll I'll be doing this till the day I, the day I die. I mean, just designing clothes. It's just, I mean, the vision is just become a household brand, really. Mm. Um, just everyone wearing it. Obviously, by the time probably this comes out, we'll have the women's range, which is going to open up a whole new market for us. Um, yep. I've got my sister's twenty one, so she she's sort of helping with the what designs and stuff um but yeah it's just just keep going man just keep going the way we're going see where it takes us in five years i don't try i try and not think too far ahead because yeah. just because i mean obviously it's good to have a plan um but i don't know what could happen tomorrow so yeah just sort of just keep going in the way we're going and we'll keep growing so that's what do you what do you feel like are going to be the most important components that are going to lead to you lead to it being a household brand um I think just try and maintain the sort of authenticity and maintain the price points. Because the, I mean, I know it's hard that Nike are triple the price, but they've obviously got a lot more overheads, but sort of just trying to keep that price point, the quality, 
and sort of try to make it a brand like that they can feel they can relay with like they know exactly who they're getting who they're buying into what they're getting for the price mm. um, I think it will just yeah I think it if it keeps going the way it's going I think yeah. we're on a winner but and in terms of like building the brand up I guess so that people are then like buying into it and want to yeah, be yeah so it. just like events like two weeks time we're doing a run with us it's nice. like our first ever like run club nice um, just to like sort of get people out the house like wearing the clothes sort of seeing yeah. who seeing what actually goes on behind the scenes um, it's just all about like empowering young folk like to sort of feel good about themselves like yeah. um, I know I get it all the time like oh I went to the gym today I was seeing people wearing your clothes it just makes me feel it's just mad it's yeah because I know a lot of these folk wouldn't have went to the gym and then they must yeah it's just nah it's just good man a good feeling yeah. yeah I guess like one of the components as well that I feel like is most important is also like you've, you've nailed what seems like the product uh -huh. just now so it's like if you're sending it to boxers or athletes who are really anal about the things that they're wearing in regards yeah, yeah. to how things feel any any small little annoyance it's like when I think about um, like Ryan who runs Boots and Pieces mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like yeah. his highest selling like product is stud conversions and it's <laughs> like studs are like to uh to the average individual one key component of a of a boot like it's one obviously it's multiple different studs but like the boot itself how it looks how it feels on your feet like slipping in it slipping in yeah, your yeah. F like foot all those other aspects are the things that i'm going to think about first mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. and then studs afterwards like yeah. i prefer blades in regards to just how things look uh -huh. but when it comes to like professional footballers they're so anal about how the boots are that they want these specific studs that ryan yeah. provides right where it's like athletes like boxers if they're wearing wearing mm -hmm. it while they're training there's going to be so many different yeah, so aspects of it that they're going to start to notice and if they're yeah. liking it then it's huge so yeah. how do we how do you maintain that how do you keep it I at think, that standard i think a lot of them like they all a lot of them train at night as well so obviously putting the reflective strips in mm -hmm. so that they can go on their night runs yeah um i think just keep the quality the same like obviously it can sometimes get a bit hard the more you grow the quality comes down yeah but that's going to be our main focus is just keep the quality yeah bang on like like you see sometimes like nike they send shoes out with like glue stains on them mm. just like don't even like look at them yeah and it's like that's like the biggest company in the world they're doing that yeah it's just to maintain that sort of attention to detail make sure like mm -hmm. everything the fit down the fit yeah. the detail and it's just spot on just maintain well, that i guess like for me i'm like always when it comes to these episodes i'm trying to like paint the picture of like what the actual runnings of the business looks like mm -hmm. obviously we've got an understanding of your day-to-day -day, focusing on like yeah. the market instead of things designing things like shoots that sort of stuff obviously yeah. i know you want to start building a personal brand mm -hmm. as well as alongside it there's obviously a lot of those kind of key components that to me stand out um in terms of like you actually running the company itself obviously now you're evolving more into Running an agency, for example, mm -hmm. to do marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know you went with Dan Daniels, which is he showed yeah, you yeah, yeah. in this episode. I've seen it on this episode, and it's like that's enough for me to sold it. Yeah. Coming from someone that does a similar thing. Yeah. And it's just obviously now me and Dan work together. It's just gonna work hand in hand together. So yeah, yeah which nice. is sick, man. So yeah, I'm always like trying to understand. It's like if someone's sitting there and they've got a, a clothing brand or like they're just in business in general, they want to understand the intricacies of the actual running of it. Um. Obviously, we've came over in regards to when you're getting in like stock. You could be paying how much? You, how, how much do you say you're paying now? Like for a, like, oh, I'd say per order, it's oh, like twenty five thousand top, like my uh, plus twenty five thousand. Yeah, plus per per like bulk order. Right. So like minimum orders are fifty. Yep. Or a hundred. Right. So you have to at least match them. Yep. But now we're sort of like outgrowing the fifty. Right. So we're sort of getting a hundred of each. It's like, yeah, it's quite. And when you say a hundred of each, how many? Like, how many different? When you say each, how many each? Oh, is sorry. So like, so a hundred of these jackets, right. and then maybe a hundred grey, hundred other black, hundred mint, hundred orange, a hundred lime. Fuck. Before you know it, there's like a thousand jackets just sitting there, and you're like, oh, I need to sell these. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. So uh, you got like a thousand jackets retailing at fifty quid. Like, before you know it, they're and then 
all it takes is just one collection to just be like well, no one likes that mm. like it's yeah it's quite a risk but yeah and it also takes one collection to just blow up and then how do you deal with that kind of like mental like black or white type like when it's like it could really go fucking incredible uh, or really could go shit? until it goes wrong and there's nothing i can really do yeah like i think the way that we're going obviously our designer he he's not just like he takes note of what's working on. working yeah um, like if it was just me designing i'd be yeah yeah I'd, it wouldn't work but obviously he knows he knows what colors are in what designs are in so He's always going to sort of fashion shows and stuff. So, yeah, it's good. I can rely on him to just sort of yeah. understand what's working. But, yeah, it's a big burden. Like, does sometimes keep me up at night. Like, mm. how am I going to sort of... I've got all that stock tied up, but I want to bring more stock out because I've exhausted this content. Like, what can I do? Yeah. I guess... Because the thing that I always find super interesting, like, um, I'm reading uh, Sell Like Crazy by Sabri Subi. Now, so that's, like, more... It's more service based, but when I think about like a lot of these CEOs, I've like really started to admire. Um, Sabri Subi is one of them. Alex Becker's another one as well, and it's like he scaled Hyros up to like a hundred and ten million dollar exit, uh-huh. whatever it was, in the space of like four years of building it, which is crazy. And it's like his day to day was literally just spent working on the business from a, like a marketing perspective, yeah, like yeah. ten hours almost every single day before then putting out fires. And it's like the thing that I find like most compelling is like. So like the stock, for example, the stock could um, start to be like die out. People aren't really buying it. But yeah. to me, that would trigger, funnily enough, like because I'm service based, it triggers like cool that's out in the market, not the actual stock yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess like what that leads from a question aspect is like what other skills do you feel like you're going to have to start to learn and acquire. Ah, uh, I know you're doing photography, for example. Yeah, now, yeah. Like, I'm, try, I'm trying to learn the photography as well. Just, I mean, I like. I've learned quite a lot, like obviously the marketing I've not mastered yet. That is something I'd probably rather just give to someone. Like the Facebook ads there, I've given to someone already, but even like the Instagram posts, um, stuff like that, I think that is something I'd want to eventually give to someone. Mm. But yeah, like photography, just not even so much so that I can go out and take the photo shoots, just like have that sort of basic where I can take content with it when I'm out in my day to day, like a day in the life. Because yep. um, folk love seeing the behind the behind the scenes. It's mad. Yep. Like they're always my highest performing posts. Mm. So sometimes therefore what I focus on more, but make it like more professional rather than just on my phone. Yep. Um, I want to learn how to do the tech packs because mm. obviously like my designer is brilliant and I'll never change him. But this can be quite expensive. Like you yeah. see, like seven hundred. Mm. Uh, or more to get one tech pack can yep. be quite a lot. Um, yeah, just just keep going the way I'm going, like learning sort of. I mean, I'm learning every day yep. like, with these sort of things. Like, but yeah, just try and learn all the sort of basics first, master all the basics, yep. and then sort of see where that takes me. Oh, what um, I also went through quite a few challenges that you actually went through. What was the one that stuck out to you the most? That was the most um, heart wrenching. Therefore, that when I ordered the stock and it just came off all it's just like <laughs> yeah. where did i go from here yeah and it was sort of just like i was so excited for it mm. and then it was sort of just like back to square one i thought yeah. i knew how to run a clothing brand that i didn't mm. and it was like oh what did i do yeah but yeah definitely definitely that one yeah and how do you feel like that challenge has played a role now and like moving forward um well for starters it's like made me realize like to get the tech packs and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. so um yeah. That definitely has like made me as a person, made mm. me as this business, made me more driven to be like, you know what, I am gonna do this. So, yeah, it's, it's all part of the journey. Yeah, yeah. and that was a bit of a it was a bit of a loaded question because there was a I can't remember what podcast I listened to, but they spoke about um, like individuals like worst traumas or worst mm-hmm. areas of their life that it happens, and um, once it's actually passed, and if you were asked the question like, would you erase it, and like know that it never happened ever again. Ninety nine percent of people say no. Yeah, it's just it's what shapes it. Eh? Yeah, actually, that's everything. Sort of happens for a reason. That's what they say. So yeah, for sure, man. And I guess um, when it comes to like the the boxer route, is that something that you want to move more down, like more athletes, or you want to move um, into football? Yeah, football yeah. definitely. Football's a lot harder though because they don't train in just normal kit. Yeah, they've all got their like team kits. Yeah, um, so that's a lot harder from that aspect of like 
getting them to just wear it because they want stuff to train in because they've already yeah. got stuff to train in. Mm. Um, and you know what footballers are like when they're out of football, they want to be like as dressed up <laughs> to the max as possible. So it's like, are they going to be wearing a black tracksuit? Yeah. Without their logo, without their club badge mm. in it. I don't even know if they're allowed to. Mm. Um, but MMA, 100%. Mm. And like Muay Thai and stuff like that. Nice. So sort of that combat sports because because they train in normal clothes. Yeah. It's like, then you can give them kit to walk out in and stuff. Mm. It's just a lot better that route. But obviously like, I'm open to any sport. Like yeah. if a sportsman came up to me and said, I love your stuff, would you sponsor me? I'd 99% sure I'd say yeah. So Any sportsman watching this? <laughs> <laughs> Get on, Robbie. Um, I seen on your website that you'd featured on like TNT, yeah, yeah. Hearts TV, um, what was the other one as well? BBC BT, Sports. BBC, yeah. 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 Um, how did that come about? What did that look? So the TNT was um, obviously the fight I touched yeah. on. Um, we gave his team all kit. And then it just how so happened his main trainer was wearing, we've got this t-shirt called the graphic t-shirt and it literally just says our logo. Nice. Um, and he was like prime spot on VT, just like behind the boxer. Nice. So yeah, that was mad. That was when my phone started blowing up and I'm mm. like, oh. And then you go on TNT Sports on Twitter and you'll see the walkout. You'll right. see him walking out and the trainer's right behind him. So and then BBC Sports Scotland, that was when Hearts played Fiorentina in the Conference League. Yeah. Yeah. They got beat, I think, 5-1. Nice. Um, <laughs> you just, a few of my pals were there. So yeah. this was n still near the start. This was like the first yeah. collection. A few of my friends were there and you just see the camera pan and you, you see it. And then same with the Hearts TV. We'd done like a maroon sort of like panel jacket. Yep. And same again, just you just seeing them in the crowd. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's that's where that's all stemmed from. Class. But um, yeah, just keep going. Hopefully Sky Sports, Dazzin all those sort of stuff yeah. next keep keep on the boxers so. 100% man and what's the obviously you said from a personal brand aspect you want to do more behind the scenes shit what can impact you feel like that sort of stuff's going to happen in the business it just gets an attachment to the sort of business even like this run with us they can come meet the owner um, see sort of what what a day to day entails like of actually owning a clothing brand yeah. they sort of buy into the brand um, obviously I love what represent I've done I think mm. the owner of the owner of George is just it's just people now buy into George mm. rather than represent. So yeah, it's just trying to get to that stage where they're like buying because they understand what I'm trying to do. Yeah. How come you've not built a personal brand yet? Um, it's just not something I've really, like I've sort of changed my whole like concept on social media this year of just yeah. like, like my website and the ads will sell the clothes. Yeah. Someone wants to follow your social media because they want to see what happens. Like, mm. don't just want to see photos of like a t-shirt lying on the floor. Yep. So if they want to go on the website, they can see that. Yeah. So it's sort of just trying to build like more content that people can like actually interested in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just I mean, like I say, people just buying into the brand for yourself. Mm. Yeah, just knowing the owner gives it a sort of personal touch, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. So like, yeah, just I'm just try and do something different to what other brands are doing. Not a lot of brands do try and do the personal brand like mm. I don't even know the owner of half these brands that folk wear yep. just because they try and avoid it yep. but yeah just but I've always been a wee bit like nervous about getting my face out there on social mm. media and stuff but the more I go on like if somebody, if somebody gives you a negative comment it's most likely because they're jealous yep. like that's, that's is that that's, what you were originally worried about? Like they sort, of, yeah, just sort of putting yeah getting the negative but the more I grow, like, if somebody wants to put a negative comment, then that's up yep. to them. Like, it's not going to make, I've got bigger problems with the yep. business than someone just putting a negative comment. So, yeah. Yeah. For sure. In terms of, um, I guess, like, being, because when, when it comes to creating content, right, it's like, if you're certain of yourself and you've been getting in the limelight for a bit, or mm -hmm. like, for me, for example, I'd done streaming for like two and a half years straight when I was on yeah. camera every single day. I was scrutinized pretty much every <laughs> single day. <laughs> you grow pretty like yeah you become okay with it um and i think as a result of doing it you become more certain of yourself and in regards yeah. to like the values that you hold um dearly if i was to ask like you you said your family put a huge role in it yeah, yeah. if i was to ask them how to define you as a person or like what who like who actually is robbie what do you think they'd say oh. uh, well, that's a tough one 
You'd probably get an earful from a wee brother. <laughs> uh, I think just that sort of never giving up mentality. Like I've sort of had that since I was a since a young kid. Like even like yeah. with football and stuff. Just like I got like drops from Rangers when I was younger. Yeah. And within like six months, I was back at Hibs, mm. and then got drops from them for something. And then even like up until like a year ago, still sort of in and amongst like cowed and beef and stuff yeah. just sort of like it can affect you when you're younger like I literally got unlawfully like sort of kicked out of hips because my club didn't like the fact I played the game for them right so I just like never given up man and I think that's what they probably say about me I've just sort of had that sort of fight instinct since yeah. I was a young kid so which is class man because I feel like it's like it's, uh, entrepreneurship is probably the thing that that is required most I think football is an key component yeah. to it it's like speaking to Gino for example it's like the amount of shit he went through growing up um, so many fucking challenges he had to yeah, overcome yeah. as a result of it, man. So it's yeah, I need mean, to make it in anything like that. You have to fucking hold yeah. on. Yeah, you've got to come overcome these challenges as well. Like yeah. that's if you had no challenges, then it wouldn't like it wouldn't make your business like yeah. the same. So yeah, it's just overcoming those challenges. My dad's always been an entrepreneurial guy, so it's nice just one. sort of been brought up with that, and I've always known that. I want to do something with that. Mm. So, what type, what type of shop did your dad do? Yeah, so he owned a music business. Cool. Um, so signing uh, artists and stuff, putting records out and stuff. So, it's like a label company. What's that? Like a music label. Yeah, yeah, like music that? Label, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. That's awesome. Did your dad produce as well? Or he just? did. He did when he was younger. Yeah, yeah. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. What kind of music is it? Um, just anything. To be fair, just yeah. he, I mean, doesn't really do it now. He's yeah. sort of taking a step back from it, but. Yeah, when he was younger, he was producing, and then but. more in the latter stages, he was sort of a record label for artists. So. Class, mate. That's absolutely class. Well, I mean, obviously, the plan of action moving forward, grow the personal brand. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the plan. The vision is to keep doing what you're currently doing just now. Yeah. What, what, how, many, like, how many orders do you want to get to, like, monthly? Ooh. Say this year, because, like, you could say yeah. thousands. Um, well, it's not something I've actually ever thought about. Putting in the spot here. Um, I, I literally don't even know. I'd be happy if I'd be happy if I can just stay at it full time, yeah. like yeah, and just keep taking away. So it's crazy. It's it's mad though because it's like the um, I can't remember who it was. It was a podcast. It may have been um, is, is Andrew Schultz? Is that the comedian? I think oh, it's no, a, there's a, they, they do like a podcast. Um, and it was one of the things on there and he was talking about the amount, of, the amount of comedians I speak to and they always say the same thing, which is like, as long as I can just make enough to have a living. Yeah, that's like it. Like, they're happy. And the, the mad thing is, Andrew Schultz goes back to him and he's like, but that's all you'll ever make then. Like, that'll be the bar. Mm. And it's like, if you're doing 150-odd sales just now, yeah. like, revenue-wise, it'll be fucking... Yeah, it'll be yeah, more yeah. than what you'd be making as a, a living yeah, anyways. Literally, so yeah, it's yeah. like, raising the fucking bar. Like, where yeah. would you be, like, truly fucking... Like gas with not set like not settling with but be truly excited. Oof. If I could get up to like thousand thousand dollars a month, I'm pretty happy with that. And then just keep building it from there. By the end of the year, if I was doing a thousand dollars a month, I'm happy with that. Happy with yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I mean, just even just the designing, like just keep designing. Like next T-shirt mm -hmm. I've got coming out. As I said, the coordinates. Um, yep. They have actually. They're tattooed on my arm. Nice photo of uh, me and my granny. So, yeah, just keep the designing, keep the orders coming in. I'll be happy. Like, it's the, the the designing and the actual like feel I get when folk are like, "I love your clothes." Or my mum was like, "I seen this many people wearing it today." It's just that's yeah. that's that's what fuels me the most, rather yeah. than like a certain amount of orders every month. How many like orders in total? You know, like that you've had. Um, I mean, there must be. Hmm, let me see. Let me see. Say, there's over a thousand people out there wearing it now, nice. definitely, and that's across like the whole of the UK, America, Australia, mm. Holland. So yeah, just keep growing, country by country, and nice. hopefully, before you know, it'll be worldwide. So. I love it, mate. I love yeah. it. Well, we've been going for just about an hour, mate. Oh, nice. Which has been fucking yeah, it's always by, flies yeah. in, man. Yeah, always that. flies in, mate. But we've we've covered pretty much origin story. Yeah. 
like all the fucking hardships in it, which you've got fucking plenty of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How you overcome them. Um, vision moving forward, plan moving forward. Yeah. I guess like obviously things like these run clubs and stuff like that, you plan on doing yeah, yeah, yeah. So more of them, yeah. Getting messages. Oh, I can't make it this weekend. Yeah, yep. we're doing one in Glasgow. So yep. Glasgow's probably next on the list. Nice. And then see maybe Manchester, Liverpool. Yeah, just it's just getting folk out of the house and meeting new folk. It's, yep. it's what I love to do, man. So yeah. Love it, mate. Continue to build some good collaborations. Exactly. I mean, more boxers. Yeah. MMA. Hopefully, Anthony Joshua next. <laughs> <laughs> As Joshua, you're listening, mate. Just fucking mind always like. Give me a shout. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's fucking sick, mate. Well, where can people find you? Where can people find the brand? Um, yes, yeah, so we're on Instagram as Active Line Clothing or website activelineclothing.co.uk. And yeah, just or if you want to find me, my name's Robbie Campbell. So yeah, just yeah, yep. Then your Instagram at on Instagram is like Robbie Robbie C, C. underscore underscore. So Lovely yeah, stuff. Sure Lovely that, yeah. stuff, bro. Um, is that where you're going to be building the personal brand on there? Probably will be, yeah. yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Class, man. Class, well, thank you so much for coming yeah, on, Yeah, no, that's been a pleasure, man. Complete journey, mate. Something fucking different again, like an actual fucking clothing brand, the first yeah, clothing yeah, yeah. brand on here. Like, obviously, Daniel's is a, um, like a reselling company. Uh-huh. I, would sort of imagine at some point in the future <laughs> it'll be a yeah, yeah, yeah. clothing brand as well. But, yeah, it's good to fucking unravel shit like this from the get-go, uh-huh, mate. Definitely. Um, and go through every bit of... Every nut and bolt, because I know for me, like when I was doing the hoodies, I had no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's it. There's a lot more than meets the eye on a clothing yeah. brand. Just, especially when you're starting up yourself, it's just everything you're doing, the website design. Yeah. The marketing, yeah. For sure, mate. I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much for coming on, bro. It's man. been fucking yeah. class. Um, trips, if you're on YouTube, obviously these episodes are rolling out every two weeks. Um, if you're on Spotify, same story. Be sure to leave a review. Let us know what your favourite part of the podcast episode was. And yeah, thank you so much for listening.